What's the dumbest funniest thing you've done with the boys? In college we would play a game called birth. Guys would pull two of the dorm mattresses onto the floor and a guy would climb in between the two. Think freshman sandwich between two cheap twin mattresses. And the rest of the guys would dog pile on top of the other mattress and we'd time how long it took him as he crawled his way out. I feel claustrophobic just reading that. Went to Mexico with the boys and after a day of drinking on the beach decided to swim in the ocean. We kept finding rocks until we found a rock about 4 feet long. It took all 6 of us to go under the water and lift the rock out and onto the beach. The whole time chanting and grunting like cavemen. We used to go off road on a 700 acre 4x4 park. And also camp overnight. So a lot of the times we would bring extra fuel. Well more than once we had the fuel stolen when gas was $4.5 a gallon. One day a few of us were at a large construction auction. And they put up a lot of around 35 gallon gas cans. Like who in the heck wants that many at once? So we all chipped on. And got the lot for like $40. After that every time we went out, we would leave two of them sitting at camp with 4.5 gallons of water and 0.5 gallons of gas. All summer long people would steal them, put it in their rigs, and then be screwed within a few minutes when the motor stopped running. For just $20.25 each, we were able to completely stop all gas theft at that park, and would laugh our asses off every time someone stole the sabotaged fuel. The owners of the park found out what we did, and gave us the original investment money back, in free admission for all of us. That's absolutely epic. You guys are amazing. 3 a.m. Myself and four others, walking around our local park. They were putting new equipment in it and taking out the old stuff. Lots of dirt and grass. Found a bobcat with keys in it. One guy driving. Three guys in the shovel. Booted around for a bit until we got bored. We had a beach party theme for the night that no one else but us was in on. We snuck pool inflatables and giant beach volleyballs into the bar by hiding them under our shirts, jackets and war goggles, Bermuda shorts or bathing suits, lifeguard shirts, etc. The bouncers bar staff didn't know whether to be annoyed or amused, but everyone on the dance floor had a blast just bopping the ball around and playing with the inflatables. We just shot the crap with people, met girls, it was a fun night. I love this. Me and the boys having a little kick back at rental place. Go outside to have a smoke and the neighbors are doing the same. They're all our age so we started chatting and they mentioned they were moving in the morning. For whatever reason we all decided to help them get packed. Smoked a few bowls got some more beer and proceeded to pack up the entire house. It was oddly super fun. A few times we'd find something like nerf guns and all get distracted playing with it then go back to packing. Didn't take too long and we left the TV and PS4 plugged in so we could play some games. Good times, never saw those other guys again but one of them gave me a tent he didn't want anymore so that was cool. I love stories like that, they used to make me really sad but as I've gotten older I've come to appreciate things that don't last forever. Found a 6 foot tall stuffed scooby doo, stuffed but stiff, had the little beads inside. Sitting next to someone's curbside trash can. Took it. Put it on top of the car. All four of us had our windows down and were holding the thing onto the roof of the car. Driving around on the main drag at like. 2pm in broad daylight. At one point another group of friends. Following us in their car. Called us on our cell phones. And told us to toss it to them while we were moving. Basically let go of it and have it fall back towards them. We did. It cracked their windshield. But they did catch it. Legitimately have no explanation for any of it other than being dumb teenagers. When a giant scooby doo is involved, no explanation is required. Back in college I had an apartment with my good friends. One day we got high and started chanting and marching around like gorillas banging our fists on the floor. This went on for an indeterminate amount of time until some girl who lived below us started banging on our door and I answered and she screamed at us asking what the heck are you guys doing. Walking around like gorillas she left and we burst out laughing. Ate together strong. We flooded the locker room by clogging the drains and running all the showers. Then poured soap on the floor and used it as a slip and slide. Not the most sanitary thing ever but it was fun af. The athletic director made us mop it all up and we all had to clean the weight room before school every day for a couple of weeks, but it was worth it.
kayak jousting, finding a beach, setting up camp, and getting lost in the forest for two days while eating shrooms and smoking all of our weed. Literally the weekend right after we went to a diving spot, not really a cliff, but it was a good 15-30 foot drop. We were jumping off and climbing back up. Now I have a friend and I swear he should be dead by now. I've seen him get hit by a city bus, try to fight a deer with his bare hands, and he's even crashed numerous vehicles but ends up unscathed. I thought he was for sure done after seeing him tumble down the 20 something foot hill, bouncing off of rocks and trees on his way down, but he stood up, dusted himself off and asked anyone if they had a spare sig cause he had a headache now. We've done some stupid crap, but I'm amazed he had survived it all. He's currently working on getting certified for border patrol and I can't think of a better man for the job Lomeo. Dang your borders will be safe forever then. We're Christians so we knew God didn't tell him that. That's the only reason you knew God didn't tell that guy to sex you up. Maybe he was talking about a different God. Who knows. I'm pretty sure some God told him you guys should have sex. Climbing power line towers. 20 years later and the hair on the back of my neck still stands when I think of it. Dumbest and scariest for sure. How I did this too for the thrill. Funny part is no one believes it whenever my friend tells them I climbed it. Playing a song me and my buddy made on the ukulele called Gyarados on night to a few cops. We were drunk, high, and just finished taking a couple lines. The song was literally us yelling Gyarados as if we were in a screamo band. I was young kid and my dad took us down to Florida, one of these hotels that had indoor balconies overlooking an indoor pool. I met this other delinquent kid there. We became buddies during this vacation and got into some crap together. We were hanging out on his balcony when we realized his balcony was directly over the pool. We came up with the idea to see if we could poop directly into the pool. We were probably 10 or 11 years old. Whoever had to crap first would do it. He didn't went into the bathroom came out with a turd on a paper plate, pushed it off the plate with a plastic fork and it plopped right into the water, and it sunk right to the pool bottom. People were in the pool, nobody noticed it. People occasionally came close to it but never quite touched it while we were dying of laughter. Eventually, this old lady stepped right on it. Took her a minute to understand what it was but she shrieked bloody murder. Everyone in the pool booked out of the water like Jaws was in there. She was shouting and rinsing her foot off with a hose while everyone was standing around looking at one another with suspicion. Eventually, the blame fell on a little boy who was crying. Kinda felt bad about that. There was a table of teenage guys playing cards and they were laughing so hard at the scenario, pee off the old lady, that the card game had to stop play because they were doubled over in laughter. Amazingly nobody ever blamed us even though we were laughing uproariously from the balcony. BTW. I am a mature adult and did not laugh, smile, smirk or giggle one bit writing about this ghastly moment in my childhood life where I was obviously less refined, cultured and mature. 1. There was an old abandoned factory not far away from where me and the boys lived, and we pinched a few pallets from there and dragged them to the top of a really steep hill behind it. We decided to play a game where one of us at the top of the hill would set fire to the pallets and roll them down at the others. The ones at the bottom would have to dodge out of the way. Obviously more points of you waited until the last second to move. 2. We also pinched a few squares of light sheet metal maybe 15 centimeters across. In this game each one of us has a stack of sheet metal and a stick. You'd use the stick to parry the sheet metal while trying to ninja star throw yours at everyone else. The game usually ended when we had too many close calls and someone gave up. There are so many more things like this but these are my favorite memories. Honestly I don't know how one of us didn't die before we turned 16. LOL have fun with your antics and friends while you're young. You'll remember them forever and everyone has similar experiences. Well thanks for telling me too late, Sheesh. We tried to shoot a Christmas tree out of a cannon on my. We trimmed the tree down to make it a snug fit in the pipe. Put a fitting on it to fit a fuse into. Then put about 3.5 pounds of gunpowder into it. The tree fit almost perfectly down onto it. We lit the fuse and got behind some bulletproof glass one guy had for some reason. The tree went about 50 feet through the air. The bottom couple inches of it were gone. The pipe was gone. The yard had a crater in it. It was glorious. 
We later found pieces of the pipe on the neighbor's roof, stuck into trees, and a hundred yards away laying on the ground. After seeing the aftermath we looked to see how big a pipe we would have needed to contain the blast. It turns out we needed steel that had thickness measured in inches rather than cheap PVC from Home Depot. Crowd surfed to the front of a mosh at a folk metal outdoor gig when the crowd was really widely spaced out. We'd been drinking mead all afternoon and they decided to pick me up and just run me to the front then throw me over the barrier. This happened a few times, then we formed a worm, danced jigs, and stole each other's hats. What is folk metal and what kind of renaissance festival party is this that I'm wanting to take part in? We tried to take my book Century my first car, I was 17, through this dirt path in the woods that we knew of, made it about, oh, 300 feet, before it got stuck in the dirt. Terrified to tell our mothers, especially mine, what we'd done, we called each friend we knew in to help us get this thing out. After 2 hours spent chugging energy drinks and brainstorming, and through the greatest feature ring of engineering known to us at the time, we built a road for the car to drive on using sticks, our shoes, and rocks we scavenged from the woods. We escaped with our lives, and my mother shall never know. It was probably my greatest memory from my teenage years. Bunch of sweaty hyped up teenage boys chanting and building a makeshift road at night in the woods. 10 stroke 10. I rode around Long Beach Island on an early 80s Girelli mope that wasn't registered towing my three buddies on longboards. Cops chased us. Good times. We also rode around on little 50cc Hondas at night just running around the island. The cops really liked that. At a cadet camp, we had a long rectangular room with a staggered bunk bed. So our room leader Michael told us on the last day to push all the bunks onto one side and we made this giant bunk bed that was like 20 meters long and all the mattresses were sorta line up so we had this 20 meter long sleeping pile on top and below the bunks. Luckily we had a super chill instructor, so when he walks in he just asked what did y'all morons do, why, and fix it in 20 minutes when I come back, was probs my fav memory from cadets. Looking to join the army soon and though I know it may not be as goofy as cadets I hope it can be as fun. Guaranteed to be just as goofy, and wild, and stupid, especially if it's US army. Nothing gayer than a bunch of straight dudes out in the field for 3 weeks. The riskiest and dumbest was probably sneaking off base while forward deployed at the UAE. For reference the UAE is a dry country so no easy access to booze. Naturally we needed a pass to go off base so we'd be tracked and couldn't do anything stupid. So obviously we did not get a pass and found a way to sneak off base. Cause getting dumb drunk at a restaurant and singing karaoke like the dummies we were. Best part was daring one of our quieter guys to talk to this lady sitting by herself. Happy to say they hit it off and none of us went to jail. Back in college, one night we thought it would be a great idea to break into our college stadium and shotgun a beer at midfield. So we hopped the fence, shotgun some beers, and threw up. Then on our way out decided it would be a great idea to climb the scoreboard tower. As soon as we go to the top, two cops with ARs were pointed at us from below. We had to all slowly walk down one at a time and were all handcuffed. We smooth talked the cops and they let us go with a few citations. Dumbest? Probably either fire soccer or wizard fights. Wizard fights are shooting each other with the 10 shot fireworks. You can probably guess what fire soccer was. Thank frick one of our scooters got stolen. We were already discussing nifty 50 jousting. Fire soccer sounds like that mess American ball game. Vegas over spring break with the guys. It was first weekend of March madness. Celebrating my 23rd birthday, and away from the grind of college in the midwest. Granted, this was early 2000s so before the hangover movies. Most of the daytime was spent in the sports books at Caesars, and day drinking. There ended up being a small riot fight breakout between a bunch of college bros fighting over the outcome of a b-ball game, or crap talk. I forget which. We bounced right as security was getting there. Went to see a Cirque show, while blazed out of my gourd, then hit up Ghost Bar afterwards. Supposedly Britney Spears was there, and one of my friends got punched in the mouth by one of her security guards. Convinced some dude bros that one of our friends was the heir to the Miller Brewing Company, and they proceeded to buy us all our drinks. 
Then got a VIP ticket to one of the strip clubs. And I can't recall what exactly happened. But when I came to we were at the fat boy burger at 3am. And my best friend was being applauded while screaming at the top of his lungs. Fat girls need love too. I had on basketball shorts of a college I did not attend. And I had someone else's wallet stuffed with cash. Yeah, that was just Friday night too. We stayed until Sunday. Bro, I was born here. Imagine what my 20s has been like. Breaking into the local school and shooting fire extinguishers at each other's 8 year olds faces. Turns out it will suffocate you. I swear to this day I almost died. 10 year old me and my friends would just go around at 4am with a samurai sword and chop everyone in the local area sprinklers and watch the water shoot up. As an adult I've though of the thousand of dollars in damages our dumb asses did and I feel bad about it. We usually rented a soccer field near our school to play soccer after the school time. One day, when we were walking the path to the field, we decided to ring someone's house and if someone picked up, say something silly and run. It was a long time ago okay. Then after we ringed his bell, the guy buzzed us in without asking who was it. In the moment, it was scary and we ran colon. Dude was probably expecting someone already. Was on the NC Outer Banks. Right where the Wright brothers did their first flight. This becomes important later. For a buddy's wedding. And the morning of it was windy. I mean really windy. Like 50 plus mph sustained windy. All of us groomsmen are engineers. So we decided that we could make flight. We ran out to the hardware store. And bought the largest tarp they had. Plus turnbuckles. Rope and counterweights. And flew the lightest guy. The best man. Like a kite for several minutes before his arms go so tired that we were worried he might fall and die. This was in the middle of the day, right in front of the nicest hotel on the island. The groom's wife thought he was involved and she gave him so much heck. Car surfing. Driving down country highways in the middle of the night standing on the roof hoods of our cars and jumping back and forth between vehicles. I've done so much dumb crap in my years I'm surprised I'm still alive. Just reading this gave me road rash, thanks. Just before we graduated high school, me and my high school friends decided to go camping at a popular spot. If I remember correctly we didn't have tents, probably some rope and tarps, but we had a bunch of beer. The next morning we started up our campfire again, and decided to see if we could make a bottle of beer explode. You take a beer bottle. Drink half the contents then force the cap back on tightly, then throw it in the fire. Once the beer heats up, the bottle explodes. Sounds fun, right? We used a high ABV domestic beer I think it was Bud Ice, and tossed it in. We waited, and waited, and waited some more. Could see it bubbling but no action. We got impatient so we began throwing rocks at the bottle. Eventually one of us got lucky, or rather, all of us. The bottle exploded, and when it did it blew up our entire campfire. After a loud bang and a huge puff of ash, flaming logs went flying everywhere along with broken glass and the rocks around the campfire. Some logs flew far enough to land near the river about 30 feet away. Fortunately no one was injured. I won't say this is the dumbest thing we did, but it ranks up there. Back when I was about 18 my friends and I phoned up every single takeaway in the local area and got them to deliver to one house in the town. We had been drinking all day and me and another mate had formulated the plan. In the UK back then at least you could start numbers with a prefix. 141 I think, which meant your number wouldn't show up and this anyway presupposed that the takeaways had anything other than a simple landline. We picked that house because we could see it from where we were. The people on the other end of the phone could clearly hear that the house was busy so we were able to put in some pretty massive orders from them. Of course the noise was the rest of the lads ordering from other takeaways. It took a little while but it wasn't long before the cars started showing up at this house. The first couple of drivers pulled up and it was a bit of a farce for them but clearly quite funny. The next few start showing up and the probably perfectly nice couple who lived there were starting to get a bit flustered and angry. By the time the drivers started forming an orderly queue of about 10 cars at a time, the couple were standing in the garden apoplectic with rage and screaming their heads off. One time me and the boys tried to take down a group of corrupt superheroes and expose the corporation that created and sponsored them. Needless to say it got pretty wild. We crash a boat in a whale. Classic.
Freaking diabolical. My friend took me gnoming in high school. That's where you cruise around retiree neighborhoods at 3am looking for the biggest or most unique gnome you can find and drive off. But that's not the whole point. Kids who just steal gnomes are amateurs as they explained on my inaugural gnome hunt. They used a sharpie to write the address of the house where it came from on the bottom of the gnome. Then we took those dang gnome everywhere with us for about 2 weeks. And back then Polaroid instant cameras were the thing. You snap a photo and it pops out of the camera. But we took him to the beach. We took him fishing. Even got a great photo of him in the back of my convertible going over a suspension bridge. We took him to parties, where my friends were already known as the gnome guys, and all these drunk girls kept wanting to get their picture taken with the gnome. This gnome had the best two weeks of his life. Then one night, at about 3am, we went back to the same house and put the gnome exactly where we had found them. But we put all the polaroids into a ziplock bag and taped it to the gnome so his owners could see everything he'd done on his vacation. Girl with majority boy cousins growing up. Oldest cousin put his hand in a hole in a tree. A squirrel bit the tip of his finger off. Me and the boys decided to drive by grapple hooks and mailboxes. We decided the B-pillar, metal structure between the front and rear windows was a good time down point for the grapple hook line. So with my buddy leaning out the don't window of my buddy's mid 90s Mazda hurls the hook out of mailboxes as we go 20 miles per hour down the road. Now in my buddy's sedan the rear window does not go all the way down. Maybe 2 stroke 3 of the way down. So he hurls the hook and it catches the mailbox and immediately goes fully taunt and the rope anchored at the bottom of the pillar looped through open windows shatters the window all over me in the back seat. So we drive off and abandon the hook which I'm sure someone found the next day very confused. So we get back to her empty parking lot near friend's house to assess the damages. It dented the frame the windows move in and as mentioned shattered the window. So we were in our late teens with not much money and still feared our parents wraith. My buddy without saying a word walks behind a building and returns with a cantal upsized rock. Places it in the back seat and drives home. Doesn't say a word and is woken up to his mom saying someone threw a rock through his window. They never found out he broke it till years later as adults. So many things. This one is without sex and drugs. We stole a reserve gas tank. Then we poured out some of the gasoline on a back country road in some woods in the middle of the night. Every time a car came on the road we lit the gasoline on fire making a firewall on the road. This was in the 90s so no phones to call the cops. We laughed a lot and probably scarred some people for life. In middle school we decided we would try break the world record for largest ball of tin foil. We realized it was a stupid idea about 80 bucks into the attempt lol. Then a tin foil ball about the size of a volleyball stayed in my friend's basements for years. We held a memorial for when we finally threw it away. Going to Dollar Tree hires a kite with the best homie. Never really had of the boys. We walked from my house to a little sewer area nearby and smoked there. Had a lot and we were both really high. We walked into Dollar Tree with some serious munchies. There were two events that happened on separate occasions. Since we liked Dollar Tree for munchies. My friend was new to smoking and couldn't control his voice volume. He was trying to act natural in the store and was just idly talking about what he was getting. Problem is, he was doing it really loudly. Well... Lem get some Reese's pieces and some sour worm crawlers and some M and MS screaming this crap in a crowded little dollar tree. Eventually I leaned over and just said you're freaking yelling bro he then stopped and the realization hit him. We got out ASAP then died laughing. Second event was when we were in line at the store. We acted okay but our eyes were very red. There were two Karen type women without masks on. One of them had a river of items and was taking forever to get rung up. The other, with her husband, complains that it's so slow. The husband turns to my friend and I and says well, look at these guys. They aren't even here right now we didn't say anything and just looked at them. The wife then said oh yeah totally and turned around. My friend also caught a glimpse of a dude trying to look at his eyes afterward. We laughed about it for about 10 minutes then got super paranoid they were gonna call the cops. Amazing times. Can't claim responsibility for this one but unfortunately I was there, in high school at the mall with some pals. Hit the food court and then the bathroom right after. I was in a bathroom stall and my buddy in the next one. He whispers over to me to move my backpack. 
I didn't know what he wanted me to do that for but I moved it away from near him. Next thing I see is a wad of toilet paper drop down with his turds on it, it landed right under the wall separating us. WTF dude I yelled out. Next thing my friend did was use some of those perfume sample vials they handed out back then. He opened like 10 vials and poured it all over the poop and TP mess and then lit it on fire. He ran out of the bathroom cackling with laughter. I'm in the middle of pooping and had to wipe my butt in a hurry, wash my hands and leave the bathroom. It smelled so badly the burning crap and the burning TP ashes floated all over the bathroom. I got the heck out of there so I won't be blamed for the nasty mess. What an butthole. Funny and creative but I wished he had given me a bit more warning. Oh man that is hilarious. I would definitely be the guy that ends up in your position ha ha ha. When the boys and I started smoking weed, we often found ourselves smoking in strange but discreet locations. One of those locations was a storm drain. There was a tunnel a little further into the woods that would lead you to an open room full of graffiti and this is where we would unwind and get high. We did a lot of dumb crap down there and apparently had the cops called on us a number of times due to weed smell or noise. The thing is though, they could never find us and we never knew we were being pursued. All in all, great times were had. The boys and I were officially graduated from high school, and we were gonna do what any other high school dump fucks like ourselves would do, get blackout drunk high, play video games, watch movies, and eat a bunch of crap. Well, while we were discussing the plans in the car on our way to one of the boys houses, that said boy had accidentally pocket dialed his mother. So when we arrive at his house for the festivities, she is waiting in the dining room with all the alcohol, weed, and paraphernalia she found in his room sitting out for us to see. We ended up spending the night completely sober and it was miserable. Throw away because of illegal activities. Oh man. In retrospect this was all very stupid, and we're really glad nobody got hurt, but this is our dumbest story. We started this one evening with what we called vod throds, vodka and full throttle, which made us fighty and then we went down to a popular street in Toronto to bar hop. A lot of pieces here are missing but we ended up stealing what I believe was a 5 featuring tall lamb from the front entrance of a restaurant and took it to a nearby school where we played hot potato with it until we all yeeted it through a basketball. Hoop and were cackling like banshees. We then found a box of ceramic mugs on someone's front lawn. There was like 30 of them I'm not kidding. So we took them naturally. And I remember distinctly telling my buddy to wait till we got somewhere else to throw them at each other. Only to laugh hysterically as he nodded and said oh yeah? Wait till we throw them while taking them out of the box and casually lobbing them at us. We then found a high school that for whatever reason. I think they'd had football practice or something. Had I crap you not, around 200 empty plastic Gatorade bottles. Thus began the great Gatorade bottle war, where we ran around screaming and pelting each other with Gatorade bottles for what seemed like an hour. At this very same school they had two 12 foot tall dumpsters that had been brought onto the property to get rid of all the chairs and desks. Seriously you had to climb a ladder to get into these freaking things. So my buddy climbs into it and announces that we're going to have a chair party and starts chucking chairs out of the thing. The chairs were a bit wet so he said he was going to dry one off with fire. He attempted to light one but it didn't work, because it was too damp. We quickly abandoned the idea of the chair party and decided to go across the street from the school to get some pizza. Whilst waiting drunkenly in line I noticed people gathering outside the pizza place and pointing across the street to where we just were. I quickly noticed that red dumpster had a roaring fire in it. My eyes bugged out of my head and I very casually walked over to my friend and tapped him on the shoulder and said we need to leave now we got the frick out of there and once we were a block away all took off running in separate directions and laid low for a couple days. I never got caught for it. But looking back I really feel like it was too perfect to have all those things on our path of destruction. As though it was divine intervention or something. Or we were just a bunch of hooligans looking to destroy everything in our way. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.